This is a production of Cornell University. Thanks, Jenny, and I just want to thank Cornell for inviting me to, to present today and uh, thank all of you for being here to, uh, to share and listen today about uh, cover and flare systems. So I'm going to talk about uh, the Climate Resilient Farming Grant Program. Uh, the goal of the program is to reduce the impact of agriculture on climate change and to and to increase the resiliency of New York State farms in the face of a changing climate. So we want to help farms uh, reduce their environmental footprint and increase their resiliency and their adaptation to this uh, changing climate. So our program follows the, the New York State AIM framework. Our agricultural environmental management program helps uh, provide a framework for assessing farms for environmental uh, challenges and finding opportunities to, to plan um, to best management practices to, to improve their, their farm management. Um, all of our programs go through uh, local soil and water conservation districts. This really helps us um, work with a, a, a wide variety of farms and allows the farm to focus on the project and implementing the best management practices and allows us to work closer with the district on the grant administration and the district also provides technical assistance to farms um, through our AIM framework and really planning these projects out so they're successful. Uh, so our Climate Resilient Farming Grant Program was launched in 2015. Uh, to date, we've awarded 12 million to over uh, two, or to 200 farms across the state. Uh, we use the Comet Planner as a way to estimate emission reductions and for the practices that we've awarded, uh, we've estimated 320,000 metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year in emission reductions. So that's equal to removing almost 70,000 cars from the road for one year. Um, under CRF right now, we fund uh, projects under three tracks. Uh, the first track is manure storage cover and flare systems, which we're focusing on today. Uh, but we also fund water management systems and Healthy Soils NY, which is our, our soil health practices like cover crops and reduced till. Uh, so round five, we had awarded four million for CRF and round six, which we just announced, we have eight million available. Funding for the CRF program comes from the Environmental Protection Fund. And as I mentioned, we have three different tracks of funding. For this round, we have 4 million available for cover and flares, 2 million for water management, and 2 million for healthy soils. So our focus today, um, you know, why are we focusing a CRF on uh, cover and flare uh, uh, systems. Uh, well, these systems have the capacity to immediately impact both the greenhouse gas emissions from the farm and the farm's resiliency to major precipitation events. Uh, so it helps reduce the amount of methane emissions on farm, as well as uh, helps a farm adapt to uh, a changing climate. The goal of, of our track one pro, uh, pro projects is to reduce methane emissions from manure management through the collection and destruction of methane. So projects must demonstrate a reduction in methane emissions. Uh, projects should estimate methane destruction potential based on volume of storage, number and type of animals, and type of storage. Uh, the fair, flare component is present to combust methane when produced. And for flare efficiency, we uh, recommend that um, efficiency can be improved by auto ignition powered by a battery or solar. We actually saw on uh, Dale's fl uh, flare that he had a solar panel next to it um, or a direct connection to electrical service. Um, also a wind shield has been found to help improve efficiency of a flare. Uh, we're also encouraging promote, uh, potential for remote data collection. This is useful in maintenance of a flare as well as in tracking uh, methane destruction. Uh, currently, a covered manure storage exhausting to a flare is exempt under DEC's air resources permit. So Dale mentioned also a lot about how adaptation and resiliency plays into cover and flare. 
A cover helps prevent millions of gallons of rainwater from entering the storage. So therefore, keeping clean water clean mitigates a water quality concern, especially during major precipitation events that we're experiencing. Um, this also reduces emissions associated with the spreading. Uh, Dale also touched on this, how uh, you know, not having the rainwater mixed in means less, uh, less volume to, uh, to spread on your fields. Um, it also eliminates rainwater dilution of this important nutrient source for the farm. Uh, so we also have a uh, agricultural non-point source uh, water quality program. This was developed in 1993 to focus on water quality issues in the state. Um, approximately 210 million has been awarded through our ag non-point source program, and 13 million is available for projects in round 28. So this is just a small sampling of some of the practices that are eligible under our ag non-point source program. Um, manure storages are eligible as well as cover and flare systems. Uh, currently, the flare component is only uh, eligible as match, as that doesn't have a water quality impact, whereas the cover does have a water quality impact, so that's cost shareable under this program. So just to recap, we have two programs, um, Climate Resilient Farming Round 6. Uh, both of these programs, uh, we just announced the RFPs for, so $8 million is available under CRF, and those applications are due March 28th. Uh, for Ag Non-Point Source Grant Program, uh, we're in round 28 of that program. There's 13 million available and those applications are due May 2nd. As I mentioned earlier, we work with soil and water conservation districts on all of our grant programs. They're the applicants and they apply on behalf of the farmer. Uh, so anyone interested in our program should um, contact their local soil and water conservation district and start a relationship on, on planning and developing projects for their farm. Uh, these are some resources. Um, I will share my uh, presentation with the, with the host, so this is something that um, you can follow up on after the, the webinar. And that's all I have to present today, and I will be sticking around for any questions, so I'm happy to answer any. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Dale. Um, uh, I will just uh, start in with the questions. Um, Jeff Miller asks, what percent is a cost share for the covers on these two programs? Great question. So for CRF, uh, we actually have uh, increased the cost share to 80% 80, 80 uh, state, 20% um, farmer. Um, as of right now, our uh, ad non-point source program is 75% um, state, um, uh, but there is uh, that is actually can can increase somewhat, but that's something that is um, that the, the soil and water districts are are well aware of. So um, they know all the, the details of the the uh, RFPs. And they can help with that too. Okay, thank you, um, Dale. This is a question for you. How old is your cover? Are there signs of wear? Any warranty provided, maintenance needed so far on the cover or other components, including separation? What percent or fraction of an uncovered lagoon would normally be from precipitation? Okay, let's just do, start with the first part. How old is the cover signs of wares and warranty provided? It's uh, 10 years old this, this summer. Um, I'm not quite sure on the warranty anymore. Uh, they did a little bit of repair work, very minor. So far, nothing really. Being 60 mil, it's very thick. Uh, the only place we've had a little trouble is where the exhaust pipe leaves it. We've had to reattach that um, once. But other than that, uh, nowhere whatsoever. Uh, storage capacity, it increases the storage capacity by one third by having a cover on and keeping all the precipitation out. So it really makes your storage a lot longer period of time by having a cover on it. One benefit I didn't mention also, does we had an employee that worked for us in his, when his teens uh, milk cows for us and he came back in his 40s and worked as a carpenter for us for a number of years he couldn't he asked us one day how come it doesn't smell here anymore and it's because the lagoon was covered all the time and it, all that gas wasn't coming off and creating a smell around the barn site it's a huge benefit in the neighborhood um so maybe that's how we can segue to the next question from jim why flare at all why not use for some economic power use why did you not do an anaerobic digester 
energy production system and go with the cover and flare. Two million dollar cost for a digester. How much? Two million dollar cost for a digester. Uh, okay. There was cost sharing at one time, but I don't believe there is right now. Um, as my brother and I are getting it, I'm that retired. My brother's a little younger. The next generation under me didn't want to have to manage a digester. They have three junior partners and they didn't want to go that far yet. Um, they wanted to take a step and we wanted to get going on, on all this, but we didn't want to have to go to a 2 million investment. And it's all investment. Yeah, everything you have to plan ahead. And this was a five-year program time we did separation. Everybody has to understand you have to have manure separation before you do the cover or you will build up solids and then you got to figure out how to get the cover off and clean it out. We've had 10 years, there is zero solid buildup in it yet. And so it should be for, one other question there was on it. It should be good for a minimum 20 years, they told us, and I think it'll be quite a bit longer than that. Okay, and have you had, just back to Alex's question, do you have any issues with your separation? Have you had any issues with your separation? Separa separation is a management issue on a, on a fairly regular basis. There, it's a stainless steel screw is pushing everything through stainless steel screen. They wear out and you do have it. You do have maintenance with us and you rebuild them once a year. But the benefit to us was um, a very large financial benefit to go to separation, stop buying sawdust and went to bedding. We had far less reduction in cost and a, far, a huge improvement in milk production due to the increase in cow comfort. It is the softest bedding out there and the cows love it. And we, you, the biggest secret to make high production on a cow is cow comfort. Give them a soft, comfortable life and they make a lot of milk. So another question from Jeff Miller, <clears throat> following on this, what is the cost of the manure separation? We had about a $400,000 cost into the entire project from the beginning of separation to the end of the cover in the lagoon. The separation was about 150,000, including the buildings and everything, and about a quarter of a million on the cover. So we had about 400,000 total. And have you had the any cost, savings from not purchasing the bedding? Well, the, the savings was $3,000 a month, just on the bedding issue. The um, 10 pounds a cow a day increase in milk production on, on uh, that, that would have been, at one time, it was at least um, $6,000 a week change in profit increase. Um, I don't know what it is offhand right now. I haven't recalculated it. But it was a it was a lot of it, it was a lot of money over the long run. And no, they don't pay for themselves in the short term. But um, a total benefit, I would recommend it to everybody. Um, can you explain the cost of the flare? The flare itself, I can't um, remember the exact cost. Being ten years old, um, this one has a had a full computer system and everything with it. Um, and it was hooked in Wi-Fi and the whole works, so it could be managed from a remote location, all solar powered. Um, I do know I do know they make less expensive flares, um, but it tracks how many cubic feet go through it at any time, total times, everything. It's a very we like the system a great, and I think the new one will have the same thing on it or similar updated. Um, Fifteen thousand dollars or something. I'm not quite sure now. Um, are you considering uh, fertilizing with the center pivot system? We looked at um, diluting the manure because the two ponds are only 100 feet apart, the water storage pond and the, and the satellite lagoon. We looked at com combining them and, and running them through the irrigation system on that 150-ish acres. The only problem is they really recommend a liner in the center pivot if you're going to run manure through it due to the um, effect of slowly wearing out the aluminum. And we didn't do that at that time. And um, we have since gone to all, uh, we're doing of, of the 11 million gallons we produce per year of manure, 7 million gallons is pumped through overland through soft hoses and then, in, and then knife hooked right to the back of a knife around the back of a big tractor and, and knifed right in. The other 5 million gallons is hauled to farther away fields, more than two miles away two to five miles away by truck to trailer, offloaded into a big tanker with a knife or rig on and knifed in in the field there. Um, so uh, the system we have now is very easy and 
and being works well for us. Okay, quickly, two more questions. Have you ever had a problem with mastitis? mastitis? And how large is your cover? And uh, how large is your cover? The cover, is a, it's a three and a half million gallon lagoon. So it's roughly a hundred and some feet by 300 and some feet long, uh, wide width and length. Uh, mastitis is an issue if you don't learn to manage it. So, um, even though we tested the solids, um, there are zero bacteria in them when they're coming out of the hoop building because of the heat it goes 163, it basically kills everything. But bacteria rapidly regrow in the freestyle. We hand rake freestyles once a day. We lime freestyles once a day. We groom freestyles with a hydraulic power groomer once a week. We rebed three times a week. Our somatic cell count averages 120,000 um, per for the year. During the winter, our somatic cell will run 70 to 90,000. And in the summer and the hot weather, it might hit 150,000. We have very little mastitis. Um, it's a full management program. You have to have it in. It isn't just put it in and not worry about it. You do it. You have to take it all into account. And my last question, which is for both of you, and I know we're over time, is how long should a farmer plan ahead if they want to apply for these programs that Jennifer's uh, speaking of? Like, like what kinds of relationships do they need to build and, and how much time do they need to anticipate in order to be able to apply for these funding programs? From a farmer's viewpoint, a year ahead of time. Okay. You gotta have you gotta know your cost sharing. You gotta have all this worked out and a plan to it's not we are always applying for grants for different projects. And we are always looking, in our case, two to three years out. While we're working on one, we're looking at two to three years away, what we want to do next. Maybe John has a different but idea. No, absolutely. Reach out to your district now though and start that relationship and and start, you know, talking to them about what your your vision is and you know what you're interested in looking at and and planning out those practices does take a lot of time. So you might not be applying for this round, but you might be, you know, putting some planning into place that you'll apply for future rounds. Um, Ag Non Point Source has <clears throat> and CRF have typically come out um, annually. Um, but uh, so so there are, you know there will be more R, uh, RFPs in the future. And um, I will just also mention. Um, that CRF does support nutrient management practices, like Dale had mentioned, um, like drag hose systems and manure injection systems. Um, we fund that under our track three projects for soil health. So um, we support a lot of these different practices beyond cover and flare. Um, just definitely start, you know, reach out to your soil and water district and um, learn more about what, uh, what we do support. And just because you don't get approved on one round, do not stop applying. Keep applying. See if you can tweak the program, your application to make it a little bit more environmentally um, effective and just keep applying. Thank you both so much. This is a great introduction to this whole topic. I'm so pleased. Um, Thank you. We're gonna now segue uh, to uh, the technical component of this project. Um, and I was going to introduce all the speakers at this time, but I think I'll just introduce our next speaker. Um, uh, Jessica Skinner of Just en Engineering um, has been working as an agricultural engineer in New York State for almost 25 years. For the last 17 years, she has owned and operated Just en Engineering PLLC. The firm concentrates in the agricultural field, working to assist farms in both environmental compliance and facility planning. A large portion of her projects include manure storage, separation, and transfer design systems. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.